white cruisers armed with the kind of rapid-firing guns that you can usually find on destroyers have been popular with captains for a long time. In addition to possessing numerous rapid-firing guns, such ships have a decent set of consumables and similar playstyle in common. There is one more feature that brings such light cruisers together. They are single specimen in their nations. In this video, we're going to tell you about a complete branch of ships that will continue the glorious traditions of light cruisers in World of Warships. Chongqing, Ramit, Champon, Harbin, Sejong, and Jinan. All these Pan-Asian cruisers, as well as the nation's destroyers, were initially built and designed in other countries. That's where multiple similarities in their aesthetics come from. One can see patterns of the British shipbuilding school in the contours of Chongqing and Ramat. Champon, Sejong, and Jinan are typical U.S. ships that resemble the legendary Atlanta, and Tier 8 Harbin is a project of a cruiser that was designed in the USSR. Since the new cruisers come from different countries of origin, their armaments also differ. Tier 5 Chongqing stands out in this regard. She has six 152mm guns housed in three turrets. All the remaining ships of the branch have 10 or 12 guns with calibers of 127mm, 130mm, or 133mm. Tier 10 Jinan comes equipped with 127mm guns. By the way, the higher the level, the faster the reload law is totally true for the Pan-Asian cruisers. For example, Chongqing reloads her guns within 9.5 seconds, Tier 10 Jinan within just 3.5 seconds. To successfully implement the firepower of the Pan-Asian cruisers, you need to get pretty close to your enemy. It's all because of their short firing ranges. Plus, taking their lack of solid armor into account, you need to be extremely careful when getting close to opponents. Good concealment and the smoke generator consumable, which is available starting at Tier 5, will assist the new light cruisers in doing so. By the way, you can install Gunfire Control System Modification 2 on Tier 9 and 10 cruisers to increase the firing range of their main guns. The new cruisers also have trademark deepwater torpedoes with low visibility and a decent cruising range. For example, Jinan's torpedoes can travel up to 13.5 kilometers, but that's not all. All Pan-Asian cruisers, starting at Tier 7, can utilize the Torpedo Reload Booster Consumable. Thanks to this, the newcomers can surprise their enemies in some situations with an extra torpedo spread. However, you shouldn't forget that you can attack only battleships, cruisers, and aircraft carriers with this armament. The Pan-Asian torpedoes can't hit destroyers, but it's not that bad because the new cruisers have rapid-firing guns to counter them with. Speaking about how to prepare the ships for battle, it's better to enhance just one of their armament types, either the main guns or torpedoes. To do so, we recommend installing Main Armaments Modification 1 in the first slot. Engine Room Protection or a special upgrade that improves defensive AA fire in the second slot. Depending on your preferences, either Aiming Systems or Torpedo Tubes Modification 1 should go in the third slot propulsion in slot number 4. As we've already mentioned, the Pan-Asian cruisers have decent concealment that can be improved by installing the concealment system upgrade in the fifth slot. For the sixth slot, choose your preferred armament type. If you choose torpedoes, don't hesitate to mount torpedo tubes modification too. Want to place your bet on the main battery? Then it's better to increase its firing range or decrease the reload time. The Pan-Asian light cruisers act the same way in battle as the majority of other cruisers. At the beginning of each battle, you need to take up a convenient position. The ideal position is a group of islands close to key areas or major directions. While hiding behind a smokescreen or island, you can open fire at heavy and slow battleships and cruisers. This tactic is highly effective because cruisers are capable of firing over islands, 
thanks to the arcing trajectory of their shells. Don't forget to analyze the environment around you. Pay special attention to any ships armed with torpedoes. Since you don't have hydroacoustic search, the chances of being hit with torpedoes while hiding within smoke are very high. It's also important to support your allies in fighting against destroyers. Thanks to their rapid-firing guns, the Pan-Asian ships can send enemy destroyers to the port very fast when fighting at close quarters. Having a Pan-Asian cruiser nearby will give greater confidence to her allies during enemy airborne attacks. Now, let's talk about torpedoes. It's advisable to launch them towards straits where opponents might appear and to attack their ships from a distance. With respect to close quarters attacks on well-protected targets, you need to be extremely careful because the new ships are highly vulnerable to powerful salvos and consistent secondary battery fire due to their poor armor. The influence of the new cruisers increases in the middle and final segments of battle. They are capable of covering allies, attacking single targets, capturing key areas, and quickly changing flanks to tip the scale of victory in their favor. The Pan-Asian cruisers possess almost everything necessary to be on the same level as legendary ships of the same type. Whether they manage to do so or not depends on you. Take the helm of one of the newcomers and find out the true power and strength of light cruisers.